You just graduated from AIT. Now what? Hi Battle Bays and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I am Andrea Siobhan and I'm currently a specialist in the United States Army. So you've graduated from basic in AIT. Congratulations again because that is a pretty big feat and now you are headed home. Unless you are active duty, then you're heading to your first duty station. What happens from there and so that's what this video is going to be about what to expect going to your first duty station and a little bit of what my experience was like so i graduated basic in ait back in 2016 and the whole thing with graduating from ait it just went so quick everything happened so fast i felt like we had the ceremony they released us we had to rush and give our families quick hugs and kisses we were on the bus heading to the airport to get to our first duty station. So at some point in AIT, you're going to get your orders and your orders are gonna tell you exactly where you are going if you're active duty. I think I got my orders like a week before I graduated telling me I was going to Fort Stewart. I didn't know what that was, where that was, what to expect, anything. So I definitely did a little bit of research and I also got some insight from a few of the platoon, AIT platoon sergeants, cause when I went, we still had platoon sergeants back then. And I got a little bit of information from a few of them that was stationed at Fort Stewart at one point in their career. So that was pretty helpful. But again, make sure when you get those orders and you find out where you're going, you're doing your research so you can kind of be a little bit of prepared for what you're going into. So coming from Fort Leonard Wood, we took a two-ish hour drive from there to St. Louis to go to the airport. So when we got to the airport, we did get there a little bit earlier. Actually, we got there way before our planes were due to leave. So we we're just sitting around, chilling, talking, eating, and stuff like that until it was time to board our planes. I'm not sure, it's probably always like this, but when I came in, I flew into the Savannah airport and we we're told to wait at the USO for the shuttle to come from Fort Stewart to get us. I also don't know if they forgot about us or if they had to build the shuttle from scratch, but we waited there for hours in hours in hours and we just waited we were there for so long by the time anyone came it was going on like one o'clock in the morning or something like that so they get there they come get us we get our bags and everything we put everything into the shuttle and from savannah it's about an hour drive to fort stewart and we got dropped off at reception at this time which is the welcoming center so needless to say we were exhausted. So you made it to reception and now you're at your first duty station. And I'm pretty sure everywhere you go, they're gonna have some type of reception or a welcoming center. And once you get there, it's when a process really starts. More than likely, they are going to have some type of sign-in roster for you to sign in. And this is also where you wanna have that big stack of papers that you got from your AIT graduation handy because nine times out of 10, the first thing they're gonna ask for is your orders because your orders is gonna tell them exactly where you're going, if you have dependents, if you're married, stuff like that. And then they may start asking you questions like, do you have a family? Do you still need to go and get them? Do you still need to find a place to live? Stuff like that. Especially if you do have dependents and you're married, it just makes it a little bit easier for them to determine where you're supposed to go because I think, I. I'm not sure if it's still this way, but I know back then you got BAH and stuff like that. You were to go into a hotel and then if you were a single soldier, they were setting you up in the barracks. For me, some type of way kind of flew under the radar and they ended up putting me in the barracks. I'm not sure, maybe it's because I didn't have my my kid with me and everybody else did have their family physically with them. Maybe that's why, I'm not sure, but I know if you do have dependents or if you're getting BAH you're supposed to go to like a hotel or something like that and if you're single they put you into the barracks is it still like that I don't know how it is for everywhere but I know here at Fort Stewart in processing I was there for a little over a week I think it's usually about a week and within that week you are in processing onto the post so you can get ready to move on to your first new, your first unit because at this point you only made it to your first duty station you still have to make it to your first unit so within processing you're going to be on a schedule and you're going to be giving a checklist of places that you have to go to get checked off so they can go ahead and put you into the system and you're going to be doing this as a group more than likely so you'll probably start off with like a formation 
early in the morning after PT. So first formation, we're all going to finance and then you're all going to march over to finance. You're going to sit there and wait until everyone is done with finance before you move on to the next area that you have to in process. So you're going to these different places to be updated, corrected, or put in the system all together. For example, finance is going to be on your checklist 100% of the time because you have to go to finance to make sure your pay is correct. If you're getting BAH, you want to make sure your BAS, your meal deduction, has stopped so you're actually getting and seeing that money so you can feed yourself um, let's say if you are still getting BAH from your home of record now that you're actually at your duty station that has to be updated to reflect where you're stationed at so nine times out of ten 100% of the time you're going to go to finance because it's going to be something that they're going to have to do to make sure that your pay is correct and I won't lie, this whole process could have been awkward, but I came to Fort Stewart with a few of my battle buddies that I graduated with, and one of them turned out to be one of my very best friends, which was super nice, and it really took the edge off to have someone to talk to. I also made friends early on while I was in processing, which again, it's nice. It's a very nice change to have people just talking to you instead of just being yelled at all the time. One of the other things that was different is coming from basic and AIT and being in this very strict, stressing, stressful environment all the time. Coming to reception, it was so different because when we got there, we were there with like prior service. So we were there with specialists that been in already, NCOs, higher up NCOs, officers. We were there with so many different people and they were like talking to us. You know, you still maintain your military bearings and you still go to parade rest and position of attention and stuff like that, but it was still different. It was so nice. And it was nice when you ask a question, you genuinely get an answer to your question instead of something sarcastic and you know drill sergeants they have to do stuff like that okay they have to do it but I'm saying it was a nice change and I know I'm probably getting sidetracked with this but I told you I was going to tell you a little bit about my experiences so the other thing that was shocking about going to your first duty station is how can I put it so when you get to the real army you realize that everything isn't as strict and as structured as the training environment portrayed it to be. It's really not. So I remember us being in the last formation and our NCOIC was like, all right, well, you know, 0, 6.30 Monday morning, be at formation. And we're just waiting for more and he released us. So the people that's already been in the army, they're like, all right, cool, whatever. And they started like walking off. So the trainees were standing there like, okay. Um, <laughs> What do we do? <laughs> We're thinking like, when's curfew? Like what exactly am I supposed to do? You're trying to leave me alone without any type of supervision for an entire weekend? Like what are you doing? So we're just sitting there and we're just watching our NCOIC just walk off and for whatever reason he turned around and he's like, oh sh His exact words were, oh sh I forgot you guys are new. Um, Let's see, let's see. No curfew, drink if you're of age, don't get in trouble. Be back and ready to do PT at 0630 on Monday morning. You are not in training anymore. You're released. And he just walked off. And we're all like, okay. <laughs> So everybody's all excited about our newfound freedom and talking about what we're about to do for the weekend and all this stuff. It was so funny. If Happy was a person, it would have been that moment. So all that weekend, me and a group of friends, we went out to the mall, we went out to eat, we went out for drinks, and we didn't have cars yet at this point, so we like Ubered and Lyft everywhere. Everybody was telling us that the funnest places is in Savannah, so of course, that's where we went. And it was like $50 in an Uber from reception to Savannah, to the mall area where we wanted to go. You know, now that I think about it, that was a lot, okay? That was a lot, but we didn't care at the time because we were just enjoying our newfound freedom, okay? <laughs> While you are in processing, you're also gonna be taking all of these classes. So you're gonna be taking sharp classes, your EO classes, your resiliency training, finance classes, and stuff like that. So you're gonna be taking a bunch of classes on top of going to these different places to in process. So once you are done with reception, you are either going to be picked up or you're going to be dropped off at your first unit. And from there, you are going to, you guessed it, 
in process. So just like in processing onto posts like you did at reception, you're gonna do the same thing but on a unit level. You are to report to staff duty because this is where you're gonna sign into your unit. And I shouldn't be telling you this, but I am anyway. If you find a place before you get permissive TDY and before you make it to your unit, don't tell them that you have a place because they may not give you permissive TDY. So don't tell them, especially if you still have responsibilities and things you have to do within that time because permissive TDY apparently is meant to house hunt. That's what it's for, for you to find a place to live. So when I got to my first unit, I mentioned it the first day. I'm like, I still need to go and get my son. And I was told that I can get permissive TDY. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, just do the paperwork. Only for them to come back and say, so Starks, you already have a place to live. You don't need permissive TDY, but I still have to go and get my son. Okay, the permissive TDY is for you to find a place to stay not for you to go and get your family. Okay, so how am I supposed to go and get him? You're gonna have to take leave to go and get him. So when I would try to take leave, I wasn't allowed to take leave because at that point, like we're in a field and we're doing all this stuff. So they kept finding reasons on why I wasn't allowed to take leave so I can go and get my son. What upset me is I was at reception. The very last day of me being at reception is when I got my own post housing. And so I signed my lease the very last day of reception. And when I asked them, I'm like, okay, I have my place now. I still need to go and get my son. What, am, what, am I, what do I do? They said, well, get to your first unit. Let them know you have to go and get your child and they will give you permissive TDY. I'm like, okay, that's what I did. They said no. So it took me a little over six months from when I got to my unit. When I first asked about permissive TDY, from that point, it took for me to get my child. And y'all won't believe what it took for me to go and get my child. It was taking so long for me to get him. They say there's no such thing as a negative counseling. I got a negative counseling because I booked my ticket. I booked my plane ticket to go and get my son without asking anyone's permission and before I put in leave for it. At this point, again, you guys aren't letting me take leave. So I'm gonna just take it, right? I mean, who's gonna stop me? At this point, I don't care. What are you gonna say to me? Because the way I look at it is, I joined the army to take care of my son, okay? I joined the army to take care of my son. And the analogy I try to use is, if you go to a car dealership and you see the perfect car, this car can do everything that you need it to do, it can solve a few of your problems, and you go to buy the car only for them to say, yeah, you can have the car, but we are gonna take the wheels off that car, and then you can have it. You don't want the car no more, because your means for moving forward isn't there. So if I'm joining an army and I'm seeing all this stuff like, wow, I can have my son do this. I can take my son here. I can do this for my child. I can I can make this great life for him. Only for y'all to tell me, yeah, you can be in, but you can't have your child. <laughs> oh, I guess it's time for me to go. And I say that because I literally had people telling me throughout that time is maybe it's just best if you leave him where he's at. No, I'm off track, but I'm telling you, just don't, if you get a place before, and you really need to go and get your family, there's stuff that you need to handle, don't tell them until you're situated or just don't tell them and just take it from Miss City Y. But I digress. <laughs> so you'll be placed in whatever section you'll be working in before you actually start to end process. After you're done in processing, you're gonna finally get to meet the people you'll be working with. And this is where you'll really find out about the work that you'll be doing from day to day. You'll meet your higher chain of command, like your commander, your first sergeant, your star major and stuff like that. And you're gonna introduce yourself. They may even ask you a few questions. So don't forget military bearing. When you're speaking to an NCO, you go to parade rest. When you're speaking to an officer, position of attention, and so on. Now that everything we're in processing is done, all the important stuff is out of the way, it is time to adjust yourself and start working. Now at this point is when you're gonna start getting crap for being the new guy. And we all went through it, you'll be okay, you'll be fine. Don't take anything hard or to heart, you know, it's lighthearted fun. It's the army, so you're going to get tricks and stuff played on you, sorry. And when I say it happens to all of us, I really do mean it happens to all of us on all levels. I've been in the army for over over three years and I still find my PC in the freezer or on some high shelf that I have to scaffold up from time to time. Some people are gonna be more welcoming than others and that's okay, the army's full of different people with different personalities and eventually you're gonna learn how to navigate through and you're gonna start going through your day to day working just like everybody else now. The only thing I wanna leave you with is do not lose your military bearing. If an NCO is talking to you, go to parade rest. If an officer is talking to you, go to position of attention. All of the common courtesies and mannerisms that you learned in basic training still applies now that you're out of training. And the quickest way to trouble is not paying attention to those small details. That's all I have for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.